What's going on everyone? Welcome to another Symphony tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about the Kitchen Display System, or KDS. Before we get started, I just wanted to let you know that this particular installation is very complex and I didn't really want to make a video about it because many things could go wrong. But several of my subscribers requested it, so here it is. If you're thinking about implementing a KDS system in your restaurant, the first thing you should consider is if you have a license for it. Make sure you reach out to your Oracle salesperson or project manager and ask them if you do have KDS licenses available for your enterprise. And now let's talk a little bit about the KDS. We can find all the KDS settings under the Setup tab at the property level. Here underneath Hardware and Interfaces, we have KDS. So the main two items we're going to work with are KDS controllers and KDS displays. A KDS controller is a service that will run on one of your workstations which is going to control all of the kitchen displays themselves. We will need a primary KDS and a backup KDS. So two very sturdy workstations or even two server computers will be required in order to run these two services. The KDS controller is a very resource intensive service. So depending on the number of transactions you will be rolling out throughout the day and the number of screens that KDS controller will be running, you will need to ensure that the hardware has enough resources to handle that load. The KDS displays will be the actual screens that are gonna be deployed in your restaurant or bar. These are gonna include your expo screen, fryer screen, grill screen, and so on, depending on how many screens you would require. Now that we understand these two main components, let's take a look at some Cal packages we need to deploy. Cal packages can only be found at the enterprise level, so make sure you click on your enterprise and then click on Cal packages. Now, Cal packages is one of those modules that you really want to pay attention what you're doing and you really have to understand what you're doing when you're making changes to it. Making changes to Cal packages usually results in sending files down to the workstations and with every Cal package deployed, a reboot soon follows. So make sure you don't deploy any Cal packages while the restaurant is open. There are three Cal packages we have to concern ourselves regarding the KDS. The first one we're going to take a look at is the KDS handler. Make sure you deploy the KDS handler package, whatever the latest version you have available is, to only the KDS controllers. Those are going to be the workstations that are going to host your main controller and your backup controller. Do not deploy this package to the entire property or enterprise. The next two packages we're going to take a look at are the Symphony KDS client and the workstation KDS display. Depending on the version of kitchen display controller you are using, you will need to deploy one or the other of these packages. You can deploy these to the property level. If you are using an older style CE based display controller, then use the Symphony KDS client. If you are using one of the newer Windows 10 based display controllers, then use the Workstation KDS display package. To deploy the packages, all you have to do is select the package you want to deploy, go to the deployment schedule, click Add Deployment, and here I'm going to select specific service host since this is the KDS handler package and I'm gonna send it to my two service hosts that are gonna host my KDS. So as you can see, Dining 1 hosts the main KDS controller and Dining 2 hosts the backup KDS controller. So I'm gonna deploy it to this one first and then click Add Deployment again, change it to a specific service host, click the ellipses and select Dining 2. Click OK and then Save. And remember, after you save, these packages are going to be deployed, your workstations will start downloading them and then reboot right after. Be very careful when deploying any type of Cal package. Once you are done deploying your Cal packages, we can start the configuration process. We're going to go to the property level, under the Setup tab, and take a look at our KDS controllers. I already have a KDS controller defined for my restaurant, but if you do not, make sure you add one and then name it whatever you would like. And then let's open it up and take a look at some of the settings inside. In the general tab, we have the KDS controller number and the name, and there are few option bits here. The option bit that I have selected is number six and number nine to enable backup controller automatic takeover. This means that if the main KDS controller fails, then the backup KDS controller will kick on automatically. 
these are the settings I have for my database update frequency. I haven't changed it from the default 1800 seconds. The wait for prep sub order is set to 2. And for the expo recall action, I have recall expo only. You can also choose to recall all. So what this setting will do is if the expo editor recalls a ticket, then what would you like that ticket to do? Only appear on the expo screen or appear on all the kitchen screens? Usually expediters recall tickets to take a look at previous orders, but if you recall all, you might run into the issue of the kitchen starting cooking those menu items all over again. For the production count increment and decrement, I have them as sent from POS and all prep done. Under the service host tab, this is where we're going to select our primary KDS controller. So this is where you're going to select the workstation that will host the primary KDS controller. And this is where you set the workstation that will host the backup KDS controller. And again, I want to reiterate this. You need very beefy workstations that will host both of these controllers. Otherwise, you're going to run into issues. I didn't change anything in the item status color or the layout color. They're all defaults. Once you configured your KDS controller, we can go ahead and close this tab. Now that the KDS controller is configured, the next thing we have to do is link it to our revenue centers. So here in RVC configuration, also at the property level, we're going to open this up. And for each of our RVCs, we have to define this KDS controller to make sure it's linked. If you don't link it here, your KDS will not work properly. So after you link it, make sure you save and then close RVC configuration. The next item we're going to configure are going to be the KDS displays themselves. But before we configure them, I want to take a quick look at the KDS toolbars and bump bars. If you are using touchscreen displays for your kitchen screens, you can go ahead and use KDS toolbars. The back of house staff will be able to touch the buttons from the toolbars we program in order to bump items, recall tickets, and so on. If you are not going to be used touchscreens, then you will need to install a bump bar. The bump bars are external devices with buttons for bumping items, recalling, and so on. So let's open these up and take a look at how they're configured. I have mine configured at the enterprise level, so that's where I'm going to open them. I'm going to open toolbars first, and I'm going to open my toolbar. Here you can see the buttons that I have designed for this particular toolbar. The button height is set to 60, and the button width is set to 95. The background color is just left at default. And these are the functions that can be performed by touching the buttons on the screen, and these are how I label the functions on the screen itself because some of the labels are just too big. So if you'd like to copy my programming, go ahead and do it. If not, from these dropdowns, there are many functions you can add to your KDS screen based on your system and needs. You can add new buttons by clicking the Add key, remove buttons by clicking the Delete, and also moving the buttons up and down based on whichever ones are used the most using the little arrows. There's also a help button that will describe these functions in more detail and you can also have a button to create defaults if you'd like to use that. When you're ready, go ahead and close your toolbars. And now let's take a look at bump bars. I'm going to open up my bump bar and we're not using a bump bar, but I just program it here just to have it. So these are the button codes that you find on your bump bar and these are the functions that they are going to execute. What you'll need to do is match whatever button you have to the function you need and then print a little piece of paper and lay it on top of the buttons so your workers know which buttons do what. Once you have everything programmed, go ahead and close this module. And now we can go back to programming our KDS displays. And again, these can only be found at the property level, so that's where I'm going to be opening them. I'm going to go ahead and click on KDS displays. And go ahead and add as many displays as you need. We are using an expo, a grill, a salad station, and a pizza station. I'm going to open up one of them and we can take a look at the configuration. In the general tab, we have a name and a number. Just name it exactly the way you want it. And then here you're going to link it to the KDS controller. Most likely you're just going to have one. Next, enter the IP address that you're going to assign this particular display controller. Assign the toolbar that you just created and the bump bar. For the platform, I have it set as PC based, as most of them will be PC based. And for the orientation, I like to have mine in landscape. You can change it to portrait if that suits your restaurant better. 
for the option bits, I have option bit number one selected, enable item select, since I do want them to be able to select at one item out of the entire ticket. And I also have allow remote view and allow remote access enabled. In the display section, you have the display type. So you wanna select an Expo KDS for the expediter and then prep KDS for all the other screens in the kitchen. There is also an SOS, which is an information screen that we don't really use. So we have our KDS Expo set to Expo and all the other ones are set to prep. For the position of the toolbar, I have them set at the bottom. And then this KDS has just one panel. If you are using a very large screen, then you can add multiple panels to your KDS at the same time. A good example of that would be if you have a fast food restaurant that has a dine-in section and a drive through section. You could install a large Expo KDS and split it in half. Have dining at the top and Expo at the bottom. For the KDS cheat layout, you have a bunch of options. You can click the help key to see how these options look like. Once you find the one that you like best, go ahead and select it. And for the serpentine mode, I am using TSR. You can also have it horizontal or vertical, whatever you prefer. For the menu item font, I have it set at 8. For a 24 inch screen, 8 looks very good. For number of columns, I have it set at 5. Again, since our screens are a little bit bigger, I can afford 5 columns. If your screen are a little bit smaller, you can put less columns or if you have larger ones, you can increase this number. For the recall review list, these are the options that I have selected. When they recall a check, this is the information that they're going to see, what it's assigned with. I just chose these and kind of tested them out and this is what works best for us. You can also assign KDS production items. So for example, if you have a restaurant that serves a lot of burgers, if on the KDS screen, let's say there are 20 burgers and some of them have one patty, some of them have two patties, you can assign production items to each menu item and then you would see a production total at the bottom. So the person at the grill would see, for example, 25 patties they have to cook for all of the menu items. This can be very helpful in some situations, but it's very complicated to program, so I'm not gonna go into much detail with it. Once you have all your displays programmed, go ahead and close this module. The Symphony Kitchen display system also includes KDS highlight schemes, where you can highlight certain menu items or ingredients to make it faster for the workers to see them. You can also program different kitchen themes, where, for example, you can set up a busy time where all the kitchen stations are open and a slow time where just half of the kitchen is open. Or you can set up a breakfast, a lunch, and a dinner theme based on what menu items will appear on each screen. Programming items like this can get very complicated, so let me know if anybody is interested in seeing that. Once you have your KDS all programmed, you can select them as order devices just like you do kitchen printers currently. Let me know in the comments below if these more advanced topics are helpful for you guys and what other topics you would like to see featured in a future video. If you are interested in more Symphony tutorials, we have created an entire platform that will teach you everything you need to know in order to maintain your Oracle Micro Symphony POS system. You can also ask for help from our programming team. You can access everything by visiting simsupport.online. And as a special thank you, I am also including a coupon code for you. You can find all the details in the description below. Leave a like if you found this helpful and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.